Welcome back to Pennsylvania Outdoor Life. 40 years on the air, and boy, are we having fun looking back at some of the stories that we did, and we're gonna continue to do that for a little bit, but not every story is exactly a good, happy story. How about the white nose syndrome and the bats? White nose syndrome was first documented in New York in the winter of 2006. Experts believe it surfaced in Pennsylvania in 2008 and began killing bats in 2009. White nose syndrome could go down in the record books as the largest single cause of death in any animal population. We visited a bat cave with Game Commission biologist Kevin Wenner and naturalist Susan Gallagher. These are the ones that are just about, you can just about see the white in them, definitely the crust on the arm that Susan and Kevin are talking about, but uh, they're not quite as bad as we're expecting to see inside. And some of these bats are, what, Kevin, 20, maybe 30 years old? Yeah. The little browns can live a long time? Yeah. Huh. So, Kevin, these bats also, they have mated if they're of breeding age, they have mated? I Maybe, know. but something else to think about is even if they make it till spring, they've likely used whatever energy reserves they've had to raise a pup. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they may, may abort as a result of that. Some of them are simply covered. So what's next for these are what we witnessed in the first cave, in the first mine shaft, is they will eventually lose their energy, decide they need to feed, head out into sub-zero temperatures and die. Right. That's not a, good, uh, not a good end of a story. We made our way past dozens of infected pipistrels and hundreds of little brown bats before turning around. We could only hope that somehow there's a light at the end of the tunnel for them as well. Game Commission biologist Greg Turner has been the leader in the research on white nose syndrome and has kept our audience well informed. Right now we're looking at about a 99.9% .9 decline that occurred over the span of about four years uh, from white nose syndrome, a, a fungus that came in in the 2008-2009 winter and uh, it took about three or four years to spread across the state and usually within one year but sometimes two years depending on when it gets introduced to the site we see mass mortality um, and so we see sites go from a hundred thousand bats down to 40 uh, we've had some go from 40,000 down to two um, many of the sites have actually gone to zero researchers and biologists from across the world have and will continue to research its causes and possible treatments the bog turtle is another animal whose population is in question and is listed as critically endangered in the United States. In fact, the Cherry Valley National Wildlife Refuge was founded in part to protect a small population of bog turtles. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service keeps track of them through radio telemetry. Here he is. <laughs> Completely dry, active. That's what all the, all the fuss is about. That's what all the fuss is about right there. <laughs> this four inch shell length turtle. And we'll keep you posted on the bog turtles. Pennsylvania has always been known to have a good population of snowshoe hares. However, land loss and the change in weather patterns have researchers concerned enough to study them. The trick is to trap them. So this is his radio collar. Okay, I see the little antenna, right? Yep. And, uh, and you have ear tags in it too? Yep, so we have an ear tag and then there's a pit tag under the skin right about here that you can't see, but we have a scanner and it will show up the number if we scan it. Okay. What else can you tell me by looking at that? Um, it's a male, you don't know how old or anything yet, right? I mean, no. pretty much that's what we're learning here? Or? Yeah, that's basically all we can tell. He seems like he's in pretty good physical condition. He's mm -hmm. not, he has some body fat on him. At this point, he's all white. Um, you can start to see when they molt, they'll drop the white hair and mm -hmm. then the brown coat will come in. So you can start to see some of the brown, but 
He's still in his winter coat. And it will be as brown as a cottontail at some yep. point, right? Yeah. So if you look fast, you might mistake them for a cottontail, but these guys definitely have the bigger feet. Mm -hmm. um, in general, they're bigger, slightly bigger than the cottontails. Cool. Okay. After yes. <laughs> what are you going to do? Just let it go? Yeah. We'll take you from the wintry woods of Pennsylvania to a story we did on the Hudson River in an effort to net and eventually help the population of Atlantic sturgeon. Members of the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service invited us along. It takes 14 to 20 years for one of these fish to sexually mature, and a lot can happen to a sturgeon from the time it's born until 20 years passes. There's a lot of hurdles and obstacles that the fish has to overcome to survive that long. So the chances of letting nature take its course to replenish a fishery like this is, the chances are pretty slim. We may have to intervene with some kind of a stocking program. Uh, we're getting the technology and the techniques in place so that if we're called upon to do that, we'll be ready. And they were certainly exciting stories. Back in 1991, we shocked the Lackawanna River in Archibald and found a very healthy population of brown trout. The Fish and Boat Commission used that story to help get sections of the river declared a Class A fishery. We stripped eggs from shad in the Delaware River, and we stripped eggs from walleyes in Lake Wallapawpack. We were there when biologists surgically implanted small transmitters into brook trout. They were hoping to learn more about their movements after being stocked. I would like to say we've seen it all and done it all, but I don't think we have. I will tell you I'm excited to see what's next. And we certainly hope that we get invited along on all of the rest of the research and keep you informed on some of those past stories. We're going to take a short break and we'll be right back. <laughs>